We're at Madonna Bay Marina, a little piece of land where you can haul out, a little hotel, nice reception area. We're about to go and have a chat with them at the hotel because when we haul out, we're going to do quite a lot of work on the boat, so we think it'd be better if we can find somewhere to stay off the boat. We're just going to go and have a look at that now. Yes, and of course, if you're on the hard, it can be quite hot in the tropics because you don't have the insulation of the water. So uh, that's another reason, and uh, very reasonable rates as well. And I'm walking strangely because I'm walking across these paving slabs that are stretched out quite wide. There we go. We'll show you the hard stand as well, which is a contradiction in terms because it isn't as hard as you would think. It will make sense when I show you. <laughs> So this is the hard stand, the grass stand, where hopefully tomorrow Esper will be nicely ensconced. Yes, I have to say, we've never hauled out and stood on grass before. This is a first. Nicely manicured lawn as well. I feel a bit bad doing the uh, scrubbing of the underside on this uh, lovely lawn, surrounded by banana trees. <laughs> out day today I don't know if in the background can you hear the beeping that's the trailer reversing so they're getting the trailer into position I can just sit now they're just putting it down the ramp we've been hauling out our boat Esper since 2004 in Southeast Asia since 2014 so we've plenty of experience but no matter how competent the yard it's always somewhat nerve-wracking I mean, a sailboat's supposed to be in the water, isn't it? Once you put it on land, all kinds of stresses and loads appear that weren't there when she was floating. Hauling out is particularly disconcerting when it's the first time with a new yard and a new method. Here at Madonna Bay, they employ the simple tractor and trailer method. This was a first for us. Before this, when we arrived in Southeast Asia, we hauled out at PSS in Southern Thailand. There we undertook a total refit and filmed the year-long process. If boat work in exotic locations is your passion, look for the link to the playlist in the description of this video or on our YouTube homepage. PSS is a proper old-fashioned fishing boatyard, so it's not the prettiest of places. They employ a winch and railway system for haul-out. A cradle is rolled into the water on a trolley. The boat manoeuvred onto it, then pulled up until the keel is securely resting there. Once the boat is in place, a winch system pulls the whole caboodle out of the water onto the yard tracks, where it's then manoeuvred via a junction left or right into its parking slot. The next haul out was at Pankor Marina in Malaysia, where they use a hydraulic lift with inflatable pads. It's probably our favourite method of haul out. You simply park the boat on top of the trolley, the operator inflates the bed, and then the boat is comfortably pulled onto land. Couldn't have been easier. Of course, Southeast Asia also has classic travel lifts of varying sizes. In Krabi Boat Lagoon, a marina with the most beautiful hard stand we've ever encountered, the lift is planted over the slip and you reverse your boat into position. There are loads of staff to take lines, hold the boat and attach slings, allowing you to get off and go for breakfast while the staff haul and park your boat between the mangroves and the monkeys. But not all yards are equal, and although Kudat in Sabah has a travel lift, access to the slip can be tricky. When you've made it through the obstacles, you may have to rely on help from a sailor friend with a fag in his mouth to catch your line and hold you in place. On the hard stand, your boat is plonked on large concrete blocks, something we weren't too happy about. And that's because once your boat is propped up on its plinths, there's no allowance for any movement or flex. So this is the ramp that they're going to be uh, driving up to. Now, the way it works is they have a tractor with a trailer. And on that trailer, they've got some hydraulic struts with plates that they align underneath the boat. As I say, it's similar to Pankor, but with Pankor, they had a pneumatic 
how would you describe it? Like a hovergraft cushion. Now they don't have that here, it's just rubber plates. It will make more sense when I actually show you the, uh, the feature itself. We've got high water at 10, it's a spring tide, so we may go in a little bit earlier, so we've got a bit of rising tide with us. Uh, the swell is not too bad. The swell was horrible during the night. We have a set north northwesterly swell that comes in. It can be quite bad. Nighttime it's been uncomfortable when the boat sort of ends up on its side, but hopefully it shouldn't cause too many problems as we approach the uh, trailer. So uh, yeah, let's get ready. <laughs> Right, so we're in the cradles. I think we're possibly uh, touching the bottom as we came in. So he's dropped the tractor back a little. The engine is now off so the guys can go underneath to check the alignment of the uh, struts that are going to be resting against the hull. Uh, Liz has taken the lines. She threw some lines out to the guys just to help guide the boat in. And they've thrown them back on board. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. So I guess the next stage is uh, elevation. So what happens now is obviously uh, we came at, a, at an angle, the slope's at an angle, so when they line up the trailer, of course that trailer's down like that. As it comes up the slope, of course, the back end of the boat is going to start doing this. So I noticed this yesterday with Christian's boat. As we hit the uh, flat, so we'll be uh, upended slightly. Yeah, so I think they had to jack us up just a little bit more, but Peter's given the, uh, the okay. So this is the last bit. Obviously this is the kill of the boat now coming up to the edge of the slope. So that's it, we're on the flat now. So we don't really notice it up here, but the boat is slightly like this. And I think what will happen now is they'll uh, eventually level the boat We'll get off the boat and then hopefully they'll give it a good jet wash while we go for a well-deserved coffee. So that's it. It's uh, game over. We're on the on the hard. Well, not on the hard hard, but uh, you know what I mean. I think we can breathe a sigh of relief and uh, call this the official end of our journey. Yeah, uh, just over here on my left, little row of houses. It's the hotel and we're going to take a room here. We're not going to stay on the boat. We're going to do a little bit more luxurious hard stand this time. And we're taking one of these rooms. I don't think I'm going to have time to check, but uh, the one thing I've been desperate to have a look at is the whole drive system, uh, the prop, the, the bearing, the shaft, uh, but they're about to do the uh, jet washing, so I think I'll look at this later. Because I want to talk about something that I've avoided talking about throughout this whole journey, which has caused me great anxiety. And um, we're going to talk about that in more detail. So we're going to leave the lads just to do the uh, jet washing and then they'll put it up in the, uh, in the campsite as we call it now. One thing that I have to say I'm really pleased with is the anti-foul. Uh, I think we hauled out, was it a year and a half or two and a half years ago? I've actually forgotten. I think it's got to be two and a half years. I'll check the Liz. But you can see that anti-foul, that's Chigoku. Nothing. There's no growth on there except around the waterline. And in fact, the one little patch uh, where there was growth was where I scraped it. I haven't actually scraped the hull properly uh, throughout the whole time that uh, we've been in the water. And I think that's, uh, that was a good thing because you can see there were hardly any barnacles on that uh, hull. And I'm happy to say that Peter can source Jigoku, uh, which saves us putting on a new barrier, tie coat. Uh, which is great, so we're just going to go for that again because it, it, it really is, I think, the best anti foul that we have ever used. Coffee time. Ah, 
got a breakfast, had coffee drunk, and I've just been looking at Esper. This is three quarters of an hour later and they're still jet washing. And what's interesting is that they're actually managing to take the anti-foul off. So they're taking it right back to the barrier coat, which is really good. That just saves so much scrubbing. And you guys are doing a really good job here. Standing here, minding my own business, putting the washing out, and what do you know, I started moving. Yes, we are being now placed in the site that Esper's going to stay for the next couple of months. We had her bottom nicely sprayed off, looking very smooth and lovely. And uh, yeah, very exciting. Now, over there, that's where we are staying. Here we are, just uh, back in Esper into a spot. Lizzie's on board, she was hanging up the washing. The next thing I know, there was a knock on the hotel door and the cleaner opened the door and there was Liz going past. Quite amusing, you had to be there. The great thing about this system is the ability to make very, very small, precise movements at yeah, every hello. single angle. Hi. So what they're trying to do now is to obviously settle the kill down on the blocks because the uh, kill takes the bulk of the weight uh, as they settle it. But in order to get that straight, the uh, guys here are communicating with the guy on the tractor who has a range of controls that's able to just tilt the boat like this, forwards, backwards, uh, which is not something you see as precise using the uh, cradle system. Here I am on the boat, first thing in the morning. I'm being quiet because we've got Gina and Christian on the boat next door and they're living on their boat on the hard, so shh. I'm not even sure what time it is, but I've just got into a habit of waking up at five in the morning. So I've had my coffee already. Thought I'd come on board and start doing some measuring up. I want to basically measure uh, the lines that we need to replace on board the boat. We have a few chafe lines and that kind of thing is quite difficult to source here. So we're gonna to have to buy that in the UK and bring it back. The other issue we've got is the charging, which originally we put down to the Honda generator. As you remember, we were in Monado and we tried to get it repaired. Well, I've just put shore power on and it's demonstrating the same problem. And that is, is that it's charging at a high rate and then over a period of minutes, that charge rate decreases. So the amount of watts uh, that is coming in is slowly decreasing, starting at anything between 16 and 1800 down to 800. So this can mean one of two things. There's some kind of resistance in the cable that we're using or the charger inverter itself is the problem. So we'll have to think about that. I don't really relish the idea of taking back a Victron charger inverter in the luggage because it's a big object. So let's see if we can get some local help. Meanwhile, when I came here, there was a very strange noise and you may be able to hear it in the background now. And it, I couldn't work out whether it was some kind of electrical circuit causing this, this sound or maybe it was leaking water. Well, it turns out it's actually flying birds and they've been circling around this uh, mango tree uh, for the last 15 minutes. And they're making this very peculiar sound, which I've never heard before. Have a listen to this. <laughs> 